Hello, everyone. Welcome to this edition of Media Marks Hurricane 2025 Outlook. I'm going to go over all the particulars as we start off with the neutral season heading towards a weak La Nina. What does this mean? Along with higher sea surface temperatures continuing, we're going to take a look at all the details of what we could be looking at this hurricane season, as well as the analogs. Let's get into it. And here are our 2025 Atlantic Basin names. Everything from Andrea to Wendy, I think we could get pretty far down this list, if not all the way through. So for this hurricane season, I am expecting an above average season with 17 to 19 named storms. Of those 17 to 19 storms, I think 10 to 12 of them could become hurricanes. And six to eight of those could become major hurricanes, putting this above average once again. What are all the indications pointing at here? I'm going to go over all of them, all the particulars, analog years, sea surface temperature analysis, precipitation patterns as to why I think this is another above average season. Looking at our ENSO index here for the rest of this hurricane season, all of it for that matter, we're going to be looking at neutral conditions for much of the season. But later in the season, models are starting to indicate we could go into a weak La Nina, which could pick up hurricane season even more in activity levels. So we're going to go over analog years here over. I've plotted a bunch of very popular storm tracks related to some of these analog years. So you're going to notice that one of these is Sandy because one of the analog years is lining up with 2012. Not to say that that is going to happen again, but I just want to put that out there. This is one of these things where we could have storms try to ride up the East Coast. And if there's a high way up here, it could push it into the U.S. East Coast. So I just want to put that out there. Parts of New England are so seriously overdue for a hurricane, it's unbelievable. Now, I continue to think that the worst areas, obviously, uh, the Caribbean into the Gulf and then the Cape Verde region, that's where we're going to see a lot of activity, especially later in the season. As we continue to slacken off that neutral into that weak La Nina, the wind shear coming down. But look at this. Yeah, I'm thinking another blockbuster for the Gulf. The Gulf is definitely going to be open for business all the way through the Northern Caribbean and the parts of the Western Atlantic here. Looking at our sea surface temperature analysis, yeah, I think we're going to see well above average uh, in terms of sea surface temperatures, especially across the central and eastern Gulf, uh, northwestern Caribbean off the southeast U.S. coast and well above average in this, this red zone across much of the rest of the Gulf heading into the northern part of the Caribbean, moderately above here into the orange zones all the way up to the east coast towards New England. Uh, Outer Banks getting well above here, uh, southwestward here. And then look, it's slightly above average throughout the rest of much of the uh, Atlantic here. Now, this is going to average, this is interesting, the Cape Verde region down just southeast of the Lesser Antilles. That's where we're going to see slightly below average. I do expect that to bump up more towards normal to slightly above average as we head towards later September and October. But averaging out, I think we'll see slightly below average uh, through the Cape Verde Island region here. So things are tropical tidbits for our analog years plotted out here. Years include 1971, 1974, 1975, 2011, and 2012. These are the most positive signals we can get. And of course, look at that Eastern Pacific, really big uptick. But look at the Gulf, the Caribbean, and up the East Coast here. In fact, we have a few of those tracks, one of those being Sandy. I just want to throw that out there for you. 2012 is something we have to keep an eye on. You know, much of the Upper East Coast is way overdue for a hurricane. I don't like to say that, but it's something we need to keep an eye on. Not to say it's going to happen. It's just it's one of the analog years here. And of course, the Caribbean is a hotbed through the Gulf. The Cape Verde Islands, yeah, I still think, especially later in the season, as that dust clears, the sea surface temperatures warm up, I think we're going to get into some of this activity. But one thing, you know, look it up the East Coast here. Some of these analog years do point towards an active season. So it's something we need to be aware of and be prepared for. Always prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. Curiously here on our analog years, look at this. Through the Cayman Islands in Florida, there's a little area of slightly below average tropical activity. Not to say that's going to happen, but that is pretty interesting. Now looking at those ENSO index uh, to water temperatures across the eastern Pacific, Ultimately, you can see we're running just around neutral, maybe slightly colder than average. That's going to continue to cool down as we get later in the season into a uh, week La Nina. This is going to be the big story 
feeding into this active hurricane season. Of course, the Gulf running well above average as we, you know, near the start of hurricane season, the Caribbean as well. We got cooler than average temperatures out here by the Cape Verde area, but that is going to possibly change. Uh, initially, we're seeing that colder temperatures due to some dust action and, of course, some of that upwelling. But as the season gets going, especially mid to late season, I expect this to fill in with warmer than average temperatures. So looking at our positioning of the Bermuda High, obviously early in the season, we'll see it more conglomerated over here into the Central Atlantic. But as we progress throughout the season, it will build westward. That will have implications for getting more storms into the Caribbean, the Gulf, and we'll have to watch for especially here some recurvatures up the U.S. East Coast, you know. Places like New England have been way overdue for a hurricane. I hate to say that. In one of the analog years, as I mentioned several times, is 2012, Hurricane Sandy. They came out of the Caribbean and came barreling right up the East Coast, did a hard left turn as we had high pressure to the Northeast blocking it. So we'll have to keep an eye. A lot of recurvatures, but also a lot of storms getting into the Caribbean, Gulf, and East Coast. And I wanted to make note, obviously, uh, Jamaica, Dominican Republic, Haiti, uh, Puerto Rico, the Lesser Antilles, especially Central America, Honduras, Belize, Nicaragua. These areas, I think, are really a big hotbed this year. Brahamas, parts of Florida, Florida, especially the West Coast and Panhandle, not so much the East Coast. It's really hard to get a landfalling hurricane right into the East Coast. But I think Louisiana, Mississippi, over to Texas is also a big hotbed here. So definitely watching all of these areas very closely this hurricane season. So for much of this hurricane season, at least the first half to three quarters, we're going to expect average wind shear. Uh, be, and then, of course, Saharan dust will be a factor over the next, say, couple months here, especially as we head into early to mid part of hurricane season through July. At least we'll see these big outbreaks of dust. So that will help cap, you know, that. Uh, some of those tropical waves heading from Africa here. Uh, but later in the season, I expect that to slowly clear, as usually is the case, average wind shear. But we could look at above average wind shear as we get later on into September and October as we see that weak La Nina kicking in. So our CFS model here for the climate model, and we'll take a look at the CANSIPS model momentarily here. You can see this is for valid for June. We're going to see an uptick of precipitation here. Heavier rain, tropical rain across the Western Caribbean, Northeastern Caribbean here, parts of the Gulf, Southern Gulf's drier, but Florida and to, over to Texas and Louisiana, especially Mississippi, we'll see above average uh, precipitation kicking in. Now, as we head throughout the rest of the hurricane season, look at July. So this is pretty interesting. We see a drying trend right here in the Central Caribbean, moistening here in the Western and Eastern Caribbean, Eastern Gulf also a little bit moister. But if you remember back to last hurricane season, this these, these were a lot higher. So this is kind of encouraging, especially the first half of hurricane season. You can see we're actually holding into August here, a little bit drier than average, even south of the Cape Verde Islands here, with right around a little bit of an uptick in activity out here as we get going uh, with the Cape Verde season. Now, look at into September here. Yeah, we're actually looking drier. Now, keep in mind, this is just one model, just the CFS. So, we're looking drier, drier down and through here with a little bit moist in these areas. So, we'll continue to watch these trends here. Uh, Caribbean, the CFS curiously showing the ca Caribbean drier than average, which is a little bit puzzling into October here. And then into November, we do start to see this moisten up. So it's kind of a little interesting here. Let's take a look at the CANSIPS model. So looking at the CANSIPS, we're looking at a complete opposite situation here. So I'm kind of more in line with this model, actually, uh, showing the trends that have been continuing to show moistening conditions and was really good throughout the winter season and last hurricane season as well. Look at this. So the rest of May looks pretty wet for the Caribbean. That kind of lines up with our forecasts here into June. You can see, look at this, wetter than average. Not to discount the CFS, but the CFS hasn't had the best track record, as we all know. So as we continue through July, look at this, moistening up a little bit drier across Florida, especially South Florida here. Now watch this as we head into July that's going to change even for the Gulf. We start to moisten things up and you see right up the U.S. East Coast as well. We're moistening things up here into August as well. We're just continuing to moisten this pattern up Cape Verde region also. So August looks even wetter across the Caribbean 
a lot more activity as well into the Gulf. And then up the East Coast as well, we'll have to watch for that kind of action uh, into September as well. Look at this. Really getting moistened up here across the Caribbean. A little bit of a, this is this would be good news for the eastern Gulf if this holds true, drier than average. And then we head into October. The Gulf does start to dry out, as is usual, especially mid to late October. But look at this. We continue this tropical moisture train into October and even to November across the southern and eastern Caribbean. Now let's take a look at our NMME model here. Yeah, wetter than average continuing. This is kind of weird across the western Caribbean. That It's actually been flipped, so... Not so sure what this model's thinking. This is for the rest of May, however, so, you know, things could even out here. Now, as we head into June, drier than average here across the central parts of the Caribbean, wetter than average across the southeast here. And look at this. As we head into July, August, September, we're go back to August. Look at this. We're showing more increased activity here uh, from the Cape Verde region to the Northeast Caribbean islands. This is curiously kind of lining up with the... Uh, CFS model drier across the Caribbean, moisture across the North Gulf here. So, you know, it's interesting into October as well. This is completely flipped uh, from the uh, CANSIPS model here. I got plenty more weather for you in just a moment, but take a look at my affiliate. Do you want some awesome maps? Check this out. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. I want to thank you for joining me for this entire 2025 outlook of MediaMark's Hurricane Outlook 2025. I want to thank you for getting all the way through this video. And don't forget, smash that like button, question or comment down below. Love to respond to all of them. What do you think is going to happen this hurricane season? Are you located near a coastline? Let me know in the comment section. And don't forget, as usual, I'm going to have plenty of updates this hurricane season. I also have social media pages, Facebook and Media Mark. Also, Hurricane Northeastern. Twitter, at Weather Eastern. I have a webpage, MediaMark.com. Don't forget, everybody, get the word out. Share this video with all your friends and family. Let's get everybody hurricane aware. Thanks for joining me, everybody. And let's make this hurricane season very aware for everybody.